Hey everybody, this is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial on Falcon, uh, sent by UVI, and this thing is amazing. I'll just tell you out the gate, buy it. It is the most comprehensive and powerful synthesizer that I've ever come across. It's really a dream synth for me, and I I can't stop using it, honestly. <laughs> So um, I'm still kind of learning it, but as I've been using it, I've started to understand a few things that kind of um, open it up and make it less daunting. And the most daunting thing about it, I believe, is like if I look at something like Massive here, I can look in and, and instantly see pretty much everything that's going on. I got three oscillators here. I've got two filters here, and here's my modulations. And so I, I can see pretty much everything that's going on at once. In Falcon, if I load up this, let's, let's listen to this patch here. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, and here is what a brand new program looks like, right? There's not a lot of difference, right? <laughs> and this, this makes no sound at all. So obviously you can't really see so much what's going on from the top level. Um, but it it's that way for a reason. It's because you have so many possibilities. You don't have a limit on how many oscillators. You don't have a limit on how many filters. You can do whatever you want. So uh, the way they organize it here makes sense. Uh, so to understand what you're looking at and what's going on, uh, you, you have to understand the hierarchical nature of Falcon. And if we look at the manual here, we can see that there are layers. So we have the program layer and the layer layer and the key group layer. So at the key group, that's the lowest layer, and that's where we have our oscillators. Uh, so that's kind of where we start, and we build up groups of key groups, or you can just have one if you want, and that goes into a layer, and then you have maybe one or more layers, and that forms a program, okay? So when you understand that, and if you understand that putting an effect here in a key group is going to be a little bit different than putting it in a, uh, a layer, namely that if you put an effect on a key group, it's going to be a different effect for each oscillator in a chord, like so let's say. Uh, whereas if you put it on the layer, it's going to be one effect for the whole layer, regardless of how many oscillators are playing at one given time or how many key groups are in that layer. And that can give you a different result ultimately. So let's uh, check out. This is a, a fully new program. So let's throw in an oscillator. Uh, here's an analog oscillator. So I just throw it in into the key in the key mapping area here. If I drag towards the top, it'll fill up the whole screen. And that's one way we can add an oscillator. Uh, we can also do it from the tree group here. And as you see, I added this oscillator and it's showing me the hierarchy here. Here's the program. Here's the layer. And if we look in the layer, we see there's one key group. And in that key group, there is one analog oscillator. Playing it now, if I turn this off here, no sound, turn it back on, there we go. So this can give you an overview of how everything is working. Let's uh, look at that complicated uh, patch again and see what it looks like. So again, it doesn't look that much different from here, but when we go into the tree view, we can see everything that's going on. And uh, here we see this is the program, the program level, and there's an analog filter at the program level. So that analog filter is gonna affect all the layers, all the key groups, and all the oscillators. And then we can go into each layer. There are all these layers here, and they're each doing something different. So let's say, if I hit solo, that's just the bass drum. If I hit solo here, that's just the hi-hats. So you see each layer can kind of act like an individual synthesizer, and it, it just depends on how you set it up. 
so if we drill into each one of these, we can see, um, okay, this has one key group. Let's click on that key group. And now look, we are seeing an oscillator here. So since we've drilled down deeper, what we see here changes according to what layer we are viewing. Okay, so um, this oscillator is tuned to make a, a kick drum sound. And if we, mod if we modify it, let me solo this layer again. If we modify it, it changes the sound. Uh, if I go to the snare here and I modify this, it's not gonna change the sound because we're modifying the snare and it's we're not hearing the snare right now. But if I hear the snare, modify this. Uh, it doesn't have an analog component. Let's try modifying this over here. So each layer um, has its own oscillators and it can act completely independently. So let's say for instance, I have my snare here. And if I look at the key group le level, there is a, um, a limiter on that snare and uh, and at the layer level, there's a, a spark verb, there's a reverb. So if I turn off that reverb, we don't hear the reverb anymore, turn it back on. But if I want it, let's say a reverb over the entire program, Again, I go in here, I choose a reverb, choose a spark verb because it sounds beautiful. Big plate. So this hierarchical um, kind of architecture allows you to put any effect anywhere you want. You can just affect um, a single key group or you can affect the entire thing or just a layer. And uh, so it makes it super flexible. Although it does make it you know, it can get kind of out of control when you have a bunch of layers. But once you understand how to use this view, it makes it much more manageable. So you have to kind of think a little differently. Basically, you know, if you're dealing with something like um, Massive here, all of the decisions have been made for you about how many oscillators you need and how many filters you need and, and how many modulators you need. Um, they pretty much said, ah, we'll give you two uh, or three LFOs and, oh, I'm sorry, this has four. We'll give you four LFOs and that's probably all you'll need. And honestly, in most cases that's true, but it's just a beautiful thing when you have something that doesn't give you a limit. It's like, you want 20 LFOs? Make them, do it. Do it in a single layer, do it on a single key group or whatever. And another thing like, uh, with something like Massive, there's there's not really key groups. There's some things you can do to kind of simulate key groups, but in general, they expect that each oscillator is going to fill up your whole key range. Whereas in Falcon, if you want to, you can make it so that uh, once you hit a certain velocity cap, it'll switch to a different oscillator. Like, uh, let, me, let me just see if I can just do that real quick. Let's go to a new program just so we can understand what's going on here. We're not gonna save that. Again, I'm gonna throw in an analog oscillator. Gonna fill up the whole screen with it. And now we wanna throw in another one. And uh, let's uh, fill up most of the screen with it. And then we're gonna take this one and drag it down and take this one and drag it up. And uh, then we're gonna fill up the whole screen with this guy. So key group two here, when I click on that, I can change it to a sawtooth, and then key group one is a sine wave. So if I hit softly, and uh, when I hit hard enough, it turns to a sawtooth, but when I hit more softly, it's a sine wave. That's the kind of stuff you can do. And uh, that was, would be kind of hard to do with other programs. So anyway, I hope this gives you an, uh, an idea of how to navigate um, and when I go, let me just go back to that uh, kind of crazy program again. And uh, let me just navigate through the whole thing for you so that you get the full idea. So let's go back to this tree view. Again, we have these different um, 
layers that are doing each a different instrument. Uh, let's listen to the bass. And again, when I click here, I can edit the bass. If I click here, I can edit the percussion. So when you're going through the factory library, open this guy up and start looking at the individual layers and then you can kind of understand everything that's going on. And then if you open up a layer, you can see, oh, this, this one right here has an arpeggio associated with it. It also has a delay associated with it. Like let's look at this bass. If we turn off the arpeggiator right here, nah, it just gives me that one note. So that's a lot cooler. This has an analog tape delay that's here, but it's not turned on. So that's an option we can turn it on. Turn it back off. I think maybe that's an option in the macros or something. I'm not sure. Bass. Anyway, here they're, they're letting you control each of the levels separately. And that's why that percussion doesn't make any sound before. Let's listen to it with that. That's interesting. <laughs> so anyway, you can have a lot of fun with it. And hopefully what I've explained here will help you, um, you know, understand what's going on in the presets and, and deconstruct them and learn what's going on. And uh, it won't seem so confusing. Anyway, again, go directly out. I think it's still on sale. Like uh, it's like two, $230 right now. Um, and it's going to go up to 350 I think, tomorrow or something like that. So buy it now if you can. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. And enjoy being creative. Bye.